If you've been putting off getting your high school equivalency because you have a fear of math, well, let's go ahead and get you to uh, move beyond that because you can definitely do this. And to get your high school equivalency, you can take either the GED or high set exam. It all depends on what state you are in. But what I have for you here is a simple math question that you should be able to answer if you are fully ready for either the GED or high set. So let's take a look at this problem. So we have 4.2. This right here is called the absolute value of negative 6. This is 4 and 5 eighths. We have negative 2.5 here and negative 3. And what we want to do is order these numbers from least to greatest. All right, now, if you think you know the answer, put that into the comment section. I'm going to walk through and explain all of this in just one second. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And I have a fantastic, very powerful, easy to understand GED and high set math test prep course. This will definitely help you get prepared for this uh, for these exams. Now, again, we're basically talking about the same exam, different name, but effectively they're going to be testing you on the same level of math. But you can check out my test prep courses by following the links in the description. But uh, let's go ahead and see how to do this problem right now. All right, so we're talking about the real number system. So when we're talking about real numbers, it's a good idea to think of the real number line. All right, so basically it's just a line with zero in the middle. And uh, as we go uh, from left to right, numbers get larger. Okay, so this is the main idea here. And to the right of zero is going to be positive numbers. So all these numbers here are positive. To the left of zero in this direction, all the numbers are negative. But the main kind of concept here, as we go from left to right, numbers are increasing. As we go from right to left, numbers are decreasing. All right, now again, Hopefully this is, uh, you know, pretty uh, you know, basic stuff for most of you out there. Now the real numbers, okay, contain a lot of different numbers. We're not going to get into this in this particular video because we're going to be focusing on um, just ordering numbers effectively. But there's a subset to the real numbers, which would include, and this is kind of do a quick review real fast. I can't help myself. So the first is the counting numbers or the natural numbers, okay? So basically this is naturally occurring numbers. So when we look outside, how many trees do we see with our eyes? Well, we see one tree, right? Or two trees or three cars or four birds. We, this is what we call counting numbers or naturally occurring numbers. So these numbers would be like one, two, three, et cetera, et cetera. Now, uh, this concept of zero, right, is a real, matter of fact, let me just put this right here, natural numbers or counting numbers. So when we include zero, to our set because someone, you know, invented this number. They say, hey, listen, uh, I don't see any birds, so we need a uh, some sort of symbol that represents, you know, nothing. Well, that is zero, so these numbers right here are the whole numbers. Now, if we take the positive whole numbers and the negative whole numbers, what we have here is what we call the set of integers. All right, so what do you think are the other two um, components to the real number system? So we have integers, counting numbers, whole numbers. Uh, so what we're missing is what we call the rational numbers and uh, rational numbers and irrational numbers. All right, so rational numbers and uh, generally this um, uh, um, uh, symbol, cannot symbol, letter, excuse me, kind of lost my train of thought there, that represents rational numbers is Q. Now, I'm not quite sure why it is Q, but oftentimes that's how it's represented. Maybe some of you out there actually know. If you do know, put that into the comment section. So uh, Q is the set of rational numbers, and rational numbers are numbers that we can express as fractions of integers. So in other words, like right here, we have the fraction one-half, we can construct this fraction of two integers where the numerator and denominator are one half. Uh, then over here, uh, negative one half is also a rational number. So any number you can uh, write as or express as a uh, fraction made up of integers like say 0.75, that's uh, three fourths, is a rational number. Then you have numbers like the square root of three or pi. And these numbers 
uh, basically when you go into your calculator, you're going to have non-terminating, non-repeating uh, decimals. So these are what we call irrational numbers, but this is basically the whole real number system. But the main idea that we need to understand here to order numbers from least to greatest is that numbers are increasing in this direction and decreasing in this direction. All right, so let's go ahead and get into it right now. So the first number here on our lovely list, the smallest number, is negative 3. All right, so I'm just going to kind of whittle through these numbers one at a time. So we'll put this on our real number line. Now, you don't have to put it on a real number line to uh, solve this problem, but I'm going to do this because I think it's a good visual aid here. All right, so uh, negative 3, that's off our list. So we're looking at our list. We're just going to look for the next smallest number. What do you think that is? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at it. The next smallest number is negative 2.5. So we'll put that to the right of negative 3, okay? Because negative 3 is smaller than negative 2.5, right? So this is really important that you understand that. So you have negative 3 and negative 2.5 if we wanted to use an inequality symbol. So you want to go this way, right? So this is less than, this symbol looks like an L, okay? This is greater than. And a good way to kind of remember this, uh, well, one, uh, there's a lot of different ways to remember inequality symbols, but uh, one good way is to think of the, uh, the inequality symbol as like a, the mouth of an alligator or something like that. You know, here's my lovely little alligator, and it likes to eat the bigger value. All right, so negative 2.5 is greater than negative 3. Okay, so what do you think is going to come on our list next? Well, actually, what I'm going to do is we're going to take care of the largest value. And that is the absolute value of negative 6. Okay, so the absolute value of negative 6, absolute value is a big topic in math. But basically, I'll just tell you very briefly, the absolute value of negative 6 is 6. And the absolute value of 6 is also 6. So the absolute value just basically means the distance a number is from 0. So negative 6 is 6 units away from zero on the number line, All right? So again, this is a big topic, but you just need to know that the absolute value of negative six is six. So we're gonna put that way over here. Now I did that because most of you that probably had a tough time with this problem, uh, I suspect probably could have gotten these values, but maybe these two values right here uh, got a bit confusing for you, All right? 4.2 and four and five eighths, which is larger. Now, if you figure this out, if you like say, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, this is easy. Well, that is fantastic. But if you struggle with this, well, we're going to go ahead and see exactly how we can determine which is greater and we're, uh, which is smaller. Is 4.2 greater than uh, 4 and 5 eighths or is 4 and 5 eighths greater than 4.2? So how can we determine this? Remember, we said that we're not going to be using a calculator in this problem. All right, now uh, here is a question for you. Matter of fact, I already asked the question, but put this into the comment section. How do you think we can determine uh, which is a bigger number or which is the smaller value between 4.2 and four and five eighths. Put that into the comment section. I'll show you one method uh, that you could use, and let's go to take a look at that right now. All right, so what I'm going to do is write 4.2. This 0.2, I'm going to think of uh, that decimal as the fraction two tenths. So 4.2 is equivalent to the fraction four and two tenths. Now, if you know the decimal equivalent of five eighths, well, you could turn this fraction into a, a decimal, but basically we, we need to either have two fractions or two decimals to determine which is smaller, which is bigger. Okay, but uh, right here, I'm gonna go ahead and write this 0.2 as two tenths. Okay, so I have four and two tenths and four and five eighths. Well, I really can't, I mean, we have four right here, but we need to kind of figure out which is larger, two tenths or five eighths. Okay, so the only way we can compare these two fractions is to make them equivalent or, in other words, get these uh, denominators to have the same lowest common denominator, right? Now, we don't even really need the LCD. We just need to make the denominators the same so we can kind of get new uh, numerators here. So what I'm going to do is just real quick, I see 10 and I see 8. And I say, like, you know what, let's just turn this into 80. So I'll multiply this by 8, which means i got to multiply the numerator by 8. And then I can multiply this denominator by 10. So I have to multiply that numerator by 10. So these are easy numbers to work with. And the whole objective here is just to get equivalent 
a denominator so I can s compare the numerator. So let's go ahead and take a look here. All right, so when we do this, we have 4 and uh, 16 over 80 and 50 over 80, but we're really comparing these two parts. Okay, so which is the greater value? Well, this is the greater value. So 4 and uh, 4 over 16 or 4 and 16 over 80, which of course is 4.2, is smaller than uh, 4 and 5 eighths. All right, so we can just go ahead and finish up the problem. And here we go. So we have 4.2. Remember, it's going to be to the left of 4 and 5 eighths because it's a smaller value. And then we have 4 and 5 eighths. So here is our final answer. So I hope this video helped you out. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. Now, there is a lot of math on both the GED and high set. We're talking about high school level math. So that's basic math, algebra, and geometry. And again, if you have some sort of fear of math, do not be afraid. I can definitely help you get prepared, even if you had a tough time in math in school. So make sure to check out my full test prep courses for both the GED and high set. Again, you can find links to those in the description of this video. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best on either the GED or high set. Thank you for your time and have a great day.